two loads so that my timer works well. Okay. Hello, it's three o'clock. Uh, so uh, I am John Denning. I'm going to be talking about uh, actually a little bit about some of the work I did during my PhD. Um, so I am from Taylor University in, in the United States. And uh, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, presently I'm an assistant professor in the computer science and engineering department at Taylor University, uh, where I teach computer graphics and core CS courses. Uh, I got my PhD at, at Dartmouth College where, uh, in computer science and focusing on computer graphics. But I, uh, I have graphics up there, but my approach to graphics is very much from the programmer's point of view. Uh, uh, yeah, I worked on uh, poly strips, but I'm not at all an artist. Um, uh, so as you can see here, this is a pretty terrible sculpt, and I'm proud to say I worked very many hours on it. Um, but, uh, but I'm interested in modeling and sculpting, and as a researcher, as a scientist, um, why not study artists and learn to become better? Well, I started off doing this, and I found that there's lots of help out there. Uh, just doing a quick YouTube search for ZBrush sculpting yields about 75,000 results. This is a little bit older, so it might be uh, a little higher than that. Blender sculpting is 114,000 results. Maya modeling, 180,000. So we have lots and lots of data out there, uh, hundreds to thousands of books teaching modeling. We have websites that are dedicated to teach you modeling and sculpting and all the principles. This is all great. But the medium that they're working in is, is still rather challenging. Uh, most video tutorials that I found were really bad. Um, a lot of them, they rambled, they, uh, they, they trailed off. Uh, there was lots of details or mess ups and then they would undo. Um, sometimes they were rather hard to follow. Document tutorials like in books can be hard to follow if, if they have uh, a couple of snapshots and some textual annotation between to say, what they did to, to modify the mesh, well, if, if you weren't in there, if it was poorly uh, staged shot, uh, you missed some details, potentially. Uh, also, uh, another kind of interesting thing about uh, videos is our time lapses. So recording, the artist records themselves working and they just plays it back full speed. Uh, but this is not very helpful for me to learn to uh, become a better artist. So this led me down the path of, of my dissertation uh, the title of it is Mod Flows, Methods for Studying and Managing Mesh Editing Workflows. So of this, of my dissertation, there were basically four sections. Um, I'm going to just talk about two papers, uh, Mesh Flow and Mesh Git, hence uh, the rather strange title uh, to my talk, uh, which is regular expression if, if you're um, at all familiar with, with that. So I'll start off by talking about Mesh Flow. Uh, just to kind of preface this, uh, all this all this is available on my website. Um, I'll post it at the very end. So if you are interested in the details, you can certainly go and check out the papers. I uh, will have some videos. All the uh, source code is released uh, GPL, um, so it, that too is available. Um, but this talk, since this is Blender conference, I didn't know how many developers would be here. Probably more artists. I tried to stick more to uh, to lots of pictures. Um, and left most of the technical details out. Uh, so Meshflow uh, is one of the papers uh, pub uh, had published at SIGGRAPH 2011, um, subtitled Interactive Visualization of Mesh Construction Sequences. Make sure my time. Okay. Uh, so my son loves dinosaurs. This is one of his favorite books. Uh, in this book, it shows how to draw different dinosaurs. And the one thing uh, that's great about this is it, it, you have this kind of interesting dinosaur down here, but it gives you step by step you know, how to construct this. Well, going from one step to another, they add in these little details down at the bottom to say, okay, from the previous picture, here's some, here's some features to look for. So there's some annotations to kind of help you figure out what changed, because as you can see, when it gets a little more detailed, the little additions are kind of hard to find. So this is interesting from the point of view of a, of a five-year-old child wanting to draw dinosaurs, but how does this apply to meshes? I'm going to use uh, this biped as an example. It's, it's, a, it's a okay, uh, but uh, this will be where we start. So 
One way to, um, to understand how to create this is to watch a video tutorial. I'm not going to play any audio. This is uh, Jonathan Williamson uh, a few years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in here, uh, Jonathan describes the process of creating this, this biped. Uh, and along the process here, it, uh, he gives details on how to use uh, the, the Blender interface. So we go step by step. He gives very good